So I think we, we want to come up with a strategy of raising more of awareness than, say, than just putting um, funds or support that we take them to court, but we want to raise more awareness on this issue. Nahuye tena naba huye ni dia yuwa so nigi shagan hazi aba kuri yamo ibi dia fashije kugirango so ingere kure zindi training zuru shaho kugirango duko meze kufasha wapi kuhi dia na hii naba kifite maranga muti mae kujia hanze changu se baba ba chuzwa watavis anda shimira chani lo kubiri na maeba ye naba dutumi ye amna kuzeti. Kimwe mu by’ingenzi bijye muri iyi nama harimo kumenya koko igitera abemera gucuruzwa imwe mu mpamvu zibatera ndetse namwe mu mayeri akoreshwa abacuruza kugeza bagejejwe aho bagomba gukorera ibintu baba batwariye bikorwa hanyuma ikintu kigeze muri iyi nama ni kumenya ise byo umuntu agize hari uburyo abonetse kugira ngo agaruke uburyo bwo gufashwa bigendanye n'ubujyanama buzima bwo mu mutwe kuko ari gya yakomeretse cyo nyinshi I really want to thank everyone who was able to join us today, specifically on the issues to do with human trafficking here in Rwanda. And whatever I'm calling to action is, let's make sure that we work hand in hand, make sure we do follow-ups and uh, make uh, the community here in Rwanda understand the issues to do with human trafficking as we also prevent human trafficking in East Africa. My name is Dr. Masi Kaliche. I am a communication specialist. I am an educator. I've greatly been involved in the theater industry. I've worked as a TV host. And currently, I'm an instructor of English as a second language. So briefly, that is me. If you need to know more about me, please be my friend, OK? <laughs> Let's be friends. So we are here because of an organization called we are here because of an organization called GI. GI. Okay. We are here because of an organization called uh, not an organization but hosted by Hope you are Okay. Why, which organization have put us here? Okay. Okay. Uh, let's clap for everyone who has spoken. If they are right, you are going to tell me. Okay? But we are here because of um, an organization called the Smart Talk Cafe in partnership with the Global Initiative and in partnership with Hope We Watch Initiative and Delight Rwanda. Okay? So we are here because of those uh, organizations that have seen it's beautiful for us to sit here as key stakeholders in this area for us to have meaningful discussions that we can inform people who are out there. Okay? I would need somebody to help me with translating. Emil, thank you. Whether you're an expert in the field, you don't know at what point you can be on the other side of a victim. So the main thing is for us to create the awareness across the globe, not just within the Rwandan borders, but also across uh, the globe. So I feel very honored to have you very important people sitting here today. So uh, our first presentation I'm going to be calling somebody on the podium. This person is, um, is one of our key partners that have enabled this event to be happening today. Um, he is an education protection specialist. He has worked with World Vision, Forum for Africa Education, uh, education Educationists, 
that is Fowler Rwanda, International British Council, Real Group, UNICEF, UN Migration as staff and later as a consultant. He has also worked in the areas of intervention as follows, education, child labor, skill development, protection, trafficking in person, in, emergen uh, in emergen emergencies, and at the national level training. So ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Emmanuel economic domains with over 17 years of experience supporting service delivery, research, policy or advocacy and partnerships in the region. This person is also an effective programs coordinator with extensive experience executing policy and delivering on strategic assignments in business and related projects, especially through non-governmental organizations, including bilateral agencies. He is an, active, an activist in human rights, especially counter human trafficking and other gender related matters. He, is currently, he currently runs an organization called Hope Iwachu Initiative in Rwanda and Central Africa Republic. He holds a bachelor's degree in commerce and master's degree in project management. So ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Kabera on the podium. until he comes here. <laughs> so, Kamera, how are you? I'm good. Welcome. This Thank floor you. is all yours. <laughs> yeah, they like getting, uh, you know, sharing and making fun. So, I like that as well. Um, distinguished uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, allow me to recognize everyone here. All protocols are observed. Um, good morning. Good morning. Um, I will speak in English and try to, to simplify it in Chinyarwandish <laughs> for those who cannot follow me very well. So I'm extremely pleased um, to share my opening remarks this morning to you all. Um, I know most of people are here. Uh, so on behalf of Hopi Watch Initiative, uh, you people are so wonderful. You kept your time. Thank you so much for coming. I welcome this setting, uh, and I'm grateful to have you uh, all in this room, of which all members are welcome to share more insights and dialogue on counter human trafficking efforts uh, done from your respective institutions or organizations or some are individuals. Um, so we shall be welcoming that. In a special way, let me take this opportunity to recognize the presence of the Ministry of Justice in the House. And uh, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, under the uh, Department of uh, International Justice, and judicial cooperation. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Yuzerin, for coming. Uh, I hope we'll be able to share more uh, about the legal working frameworks um, set uh, to address in human trafficking issues uh, in our country. Um, I also, there's another arm um, that we need to recognize. Uh, is someone from Mini ICT here as yet? Not yet. Not yet. So they'll be joining us, and we really need to recognize them in a special way. Um, we also have, uh, uh, we cannot, we can't forget the presence of RIP, Rwanda Investigative uh, Investigation Bureau in the house. I find it really. uh, thank you so much for coming. Um, we know you have a lot. Uh, that you are dealing with on a daily basis uh, in, in, in regards to human trafficking. So we shall learn more from you if time allows. Uh, for spotlight cases and getting more deep into what human trafficking, uh, what happens during the difficult journey uh, of the topic today, Hope Watch Initiative in partnership with the, uh, the Right Rwanda and Smart Talk Cafe Kenya 
we have invited some of the survivors who can testify um, uh, the tactics, the strategies applied by the perpetrators, and also, if time allows, they may suggest possible solutions uh, to such an emerging crime. So let's also clap. Uh, Yeah, cases of human trafficking cases. Um, 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 I think my specs are changing. So ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, due to the complexity of human trafficking and its close connection with other transnational organized crimes, no single entity is capable of combating, com combating this transitional, transnational threat on their own. So a taken of thanks. Uh, goes to Smart uh, Talk Cafe and the Global Initiative Against Transnational Organized Crimes under the Zillius Fund. Uh, they are the ones pushing um, to ha uh, so hard for such talk to happen and to continue to happen uh, until we realize that all Rwandese are able to understand the situation and be able to recognize, uh, to record the progress. So a big round of applause to them as well. Uh, in conclusion, or before I conclude, I need to also to recognize the Rwanda Eagle Aid, Aid Forum in the house. So we are not forgetting you. We know we've been working so hard together, especially in direct, uh, direct response to the victims. Barakora. Bakora Kazi, or who are victims in Hagua, Munga, Niba charging of a Frank and Guyungu Yungo, Yamatejaka Bobusa and I. You have a victim, Ushe, Turakora and our easy, but I'm going to be a hey, be judges. They send their, they allow their professional lawyers to attend to those victims. So be crap for them as well. Yeah. Um, in conclusion, dear guests, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to underline that cooperation and partnership uh, is very critical to fighting trafficking persons. I'm sure the strong government's will uh, and close partnerships with members present, we shall bring together, uh, bring such a shameful crime to the end. So that partnership is so important. Oh my God, I'm forgetting migration uh, directorate of migration and migration. They are also present in the house. <laughs> Thank you so much. So please don't feel offended if there's anyone I'm forgetting. Um, so I thank you so much, and I want to. I hope you're going to have a very fruitful uh, meeting. So don't just sit at the back and wait. We see how we can move in this kind of um, talk, in this cafe. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you so much. Let's clap and say the six down. We keep clapping and say the six down. So he has mentioned that uh, in the room we are having different stakeholders and uh, we even have survivors. So with the current stage of detection and intervention highlights the need for appropriate information and tools for community stakeholders working to prevent human trafficking, to protect those impacted and hold offenders accountable. So we are having all these departments, for all these departments representing different areas so that we can come up with a specific toolkit that will be able to help us at the end of this forum. So ladies and gentlemen, the next speaker who is coming on board is a very key person to this forum. This person, he is a sustainable development uh, consultant whose, prima, whose primary focus has been working with youth and ensuring that they acquire the necessary skills to be self-sufficient and generate community solutions. He is the Chief Executive Officer and the founder of Smart Talk Cafe. So I think you know who he is, right? Okay. 
So where he has been able to engage with young people to improve Africa, notably in the areas of circular economy, climate change, peace, and strong institutions, and also in the area of organized crime. And that's why we are here today, because human trafficking is part of organized crime. So Andati, Andati's seven years of experience as a trainer and in community development have given him a wealth of knowledge regarding young people for whom he has a strong affection. He is a trainer that focuses mostly on sustainable development goals, community development, policy creation, circular economy, project um, development and management, peace and security, climate action, and strategic management. He is also a mental health specialist, trained at the University of Nairobi with a bachelor's degree in counseling psychology and over two years experience organizing, creating support groups, and providing psychosocial and empathetic care to survivors. Through his knowledge, he is currently one of the principal creators and coordinators of the Africa Sustainable Development Fellowship, whose mission is to empower the African continent by providing young people with um, affirmed abilities. And that he is an accredited specialist with sustainable development with training from Springville uh, College Foundation. He, desire, he, he desires to provide youth-friendly environments that foster health, dialogue, conversations, and societal transformation today. And I think his biography clearly states why we are here today, right? Yeah. So please, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome this young person to the podium to officially tell us why he called us here. If you don't tell us, we are going home. So please, Mr. Anati. Please let's come until he comes to the podium. If I see you not clapping, eh? Okay, thank you so much. I don't even have something to say, but um, thank you so much. And um, first of all, I want to thank everyone uh, who has been recognized, all protocols observed. Uh, for joining us today for this uh, uh, forum, uh, making sure that uh, we are bridging the knowledge gap, specifically when we're talking about uh, human trafficking, not only uh, in Rwanda, but it is a step uh, towards making sure that East Africa uh, is one of those places that uh, we have reduced numbers when it comes to human trafficking, uh, but also we have uh, good toolkits, platforms. Uh, that can help in terms of uh, helping the survivors uh, so that they can integrate into communities and make sure that uh, they are part and parcel uh, for the growth uh, when it comes to different communities. Uh, uh, I want to recognize one of the key organizations and uh, also share who they are so that uh, as we are moving forward, everyone knows uh, who is Matokafe, who is Global Initiative, against transnational organized crime and uh, what is Resilience Fund. So Smart Talk Cafe uh, started uh, in 2018 uh, with the key focus of uh, engaging young people uh, uh, from uh, discussions, answering the key questions of uh, what are the issues that are affecting you as an individual. Then when it is affecting you as an individual, how is it affecting your family? Then after that, how is it going to affect your community? Then how is it going to affect uh, the whole country? So that's where we started uh, with the key focus on uh, the SDGs. I uh, think uh, so some people here know about them, the SDGs. And whatever we're looking into is how do we integrate uh, the SDGs, number one, in policy, that's working hand in hand with government and government institutions. Uh, number two, projects. Uh, specifically projects that are run by young people. How do they integrate sustainable development goals into their key objectives and uh, making sure that their solutions are sustainable? Because everyone, they always say everyone can share a solution, but uh, the lifetime of it is what is going to prove it was if it was something that is impactful or not. 
So how do we get them sustainable? And uh, through our engagement, uh, we were able to uh, meet global initiative against transnational organized crime and uh, in one specific area, which is organized crime. So we have a docket and organized crime, which focuses on uh, number one, human trafficking. Then uh, the other area that we also engage under organized crime is also on uh, indigenous trees and indigenous crops, and then trafficking across East Africa. So that's why we made Global Initiative Against Transnational Organized Crime, which it is a consortium of different practitioners. Uh, who are dealing under organized crime. So they are lawyers, uh, we have presidents, uh, we have uh, ministers, we have ambassadors from different countries, and uh, also under IOM, uh, we have also membership from IOM, we have UNHCR. Uh, these key organizations are also embassies. So the Tokyo Embassy, uh, the British Embassy came together and whatever they did is they created the Global Initiative Against Transnational Organized Crime, where whatever they are doing is they are going to community organizations that are dealing with organized crime. So if you're dealing with human trafficking in which specific areas, is it labor trafficking, is it sex trafficking, and um, where do you need help? Do you need legal help? Do you need finances in order to help uh, scale up uh, whatever program or project that you're running? Or do you need to have a platform where now we have different stakeholders, uh, different expertise coming together and helping you in terms of building uh, that specific uh, program? So first we are engaging on the other trees. So we have one indigenous tree, which is uh, sandalwood. Uh, maybe for some who will want to know about it, you can uh, come and uh, reach me. Sandalwood is one of the most indigenous trees in the world and also the most lucrative, especially when it comes to finances. So those are the areas that we are engaged. But whatever brought us here is under human trafficking. So the key areas that we engage in the Global Initiative Against Transnational Organized Crime is number one, research. So we come to countries and do research. We want to know uh, who are the perpetrators, uh, what are the avenues, especially that are uh, helping uh, those perpetrators to make sure that they get to the community. What is the informational uh, gaps or does the community understand human trafficking? Which specific communities? Uh, uh, number three, uh, in terms of communities, uh, do they, are they aware of whatever government? Because each representative here from government, they will tell us and they will, we will see that they are areas or avenues that they can help. Uh, they can make sure this is through policies, through laws, through labor laws, and uh, looking at issues to do with moving towards other countries, uh, through borders, and all that. So how does the community understand it? Do they understand it? Is it broken down in a language that if we get uh, a, a young school girl who wants to go and work in Kenya, she knows that she needs to get a passport. She knows that she needs to have a work permit. She knows that these are the legal avenues. She knows that the organization that is employing her needs to send a letter and it needs to be approved by Rwanda Investigation Bureau or Ministry of Justice. Do they know this so that now they can cover those specific gaps that the perpetrators use in terms of uh, making sure that they move? So we are here uh, because this is a pilot uh, project, uh, which uh, this is our uh, first year. But now the project is going to run for a period of uh, four years. And whatever we are aiming at is number one under the pilot phase. Let's meet the stakeholders. Let's meet government. Let's meet civil society. Let's meet community members. Let's sit on a table and let's discuss, because maybe government thinks that people in the community know. Legal, uh, legal aid forum thinks maybe people know that they're offering these specific services. I hope the WASH initiative, maybe people, they think people know that they're offering counseling services. And uh, like Rwanda, maybe they think that people know that they are doing trainings in schools or, and different platforms. Maybe they don't know. So how can we sit together, have a discussion and see uh, through these specific engagements, which are the gaps? 
according to government. What are the government? Maybe the implementation of the policies are a little bit of an issue. Maybe the realization of the policies are a little bit of an issue. So how do we make sure that Hopi Washu is helping uh, Ministry of Justice or helping uh, uh, Rwanda Investigation Bureau to make sure that they reach out the community? How are we making sure that Hopi, Hopi Washu Initiative it has bridged the gap where if they have people who are survivors, then they can get legal services which are being given for free through the legal aid form. So creating a toolkit where each and every player in the specific space know who is playing which part and how are they going to make sure that uh, they implement and make sure that people at community number one understand what human trafficking is, number two understand what does the government have to offer uh, specifically when it comes to labor, when it comes to sex trafficking, when it comes to the education sector, when it comes to different sectors that are uh, aligned uh, towards uh, human trafficking. Then they should also know which organizations are here, are here and which are the specific services that they can offer so that at their own time or if they meet someone who has been affected, they know who to reach out to. They know where to go and how they can help one another. So, thank you so much. I think I will do my presentation more and more for more for in details on whatever we are planning to do. But uh, I really want to thank you so much for creating the time to come here to make sure that we can bridge that gap. Make sure that we can understand what everyone is doing so that now we can have not only a solution but a sustainable solution forever. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Andati, for the amazing presentation conversation. She serves as a research officer at the Legal Aid Forum. She is passionate about human rights and advocacy related activities that aim at promoting human rights of all people, especially the vulnerable groups, uh, group of people. She holds a bachelor's degree, a degree in law from the University of Rwanda and currently pursuing a diploma in legal practice at the Institute of Legal Practice and Development here in Rwanda. She has undertaken various research projects at a legal aid forum, which have the basis and evidence for uh, advocacy towards improved human rights protection in Rwanda. Currently at a legal aid forum, she is a vocal person for an uh, ongoing uh, for an ongoing research developing uh, a regional survivors engagement policy. That is that uh, the legal aid forum is collaborating with other regional anti-trafficking organizations aiming at generating findings that will enable anti-slavery and human trafficking organizations in East Africa, in East and Central Africa, to develop a policy framework for meaningful survivors, survivor engagement. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Cecilia on the podium. Am I okay. um, Thank you very much, Smart Stop Cafe and uh, the partnering organizations. As Mercy said, my name is Akasita Tebesa, and I work at the Legal Aid Forum as a research officer. Um, I'm very happy to be here. One, being um, a young person, and uh, I was moved by the fact that Smart Stop Cafe is a youth-based initiative. So I was like, okay, do the youth know about human trafficking. Um, so I'm here one to learn as well from everyone here. But again, I'm here to share with you what the Legal Aid Forum does or what are we trying to do uh, in addressing the issue of human trafficking. Um, I heard that we have survivors in here with us. I'm not sure if they're really on track with us with the English and the language we're using. I remember when we told you to use But I had it. I didn't put the fashion, yeah? We mix, mix. Sibjo, Kuko, I think this is a topic that is sensitive and they really need to know what we are sharing here. Um, just to give an introduction, Kinyaranda, Nitka Cecilia, Tervesa, Nitka Mudyango, 
witwa Ligo Ekwan mutangu fasha mu byamategeko ubatishoboye ubuntu it's free Ligo Aid um, but again to the survivors or the victims of human trafficking this is something that nichi too much really baraka cyane given that human trafficking nichi no gisa nkaho ari gishasha kandi kitari gishasha kitavugwa cyane kitazwi cyane so we are very happy that you invited us here and we really look forward to engage with you uh, smart talk cafe and every initiative in here to raise awareness uh, it's on bide at the legal aid forum to ziko harichivazo chuko abandu watazi human trafficking for one specific kind nababizi it's something nichinu bachirimo bashira mubwiru nichinu chitabuwa openly awareness for human trafficking that we call wali hajije victims uh bisanga baba trafficked but ariwaziko they are in process to be trafficked so Thank you very much for calling on this meeting that we share. Um, I've been asked to share with everyone here on a human rights approach to anti-human trafficking policies and interventions in Rwanda. Um, to my understanding, I was thinking we need to share or discuss what is Rwanda doing, what has Rwanda done, the initiatives that Rwanda has put forward or is trying to put in to address the issue of human trafficking. Um, surprisingly, the government is putting in a lot of efforts to, to discuss or address this issue, be it in the legal framework, or the policy framework, a lot, or I wouldn't say a lot, but there are efforts being put in to address the issue. But still, human trafficking is still rising on a higher pace. So what should be done? This is a question that I think will be answered at the end of today. Let's take um, ideas or concrete recommendations and to address this issue. So ladies and gentlemen, I, I want to go in a lot on uh, the introduction or on human trafficking. They told us um, about this. Um, I would like to start with a, uh, a speech that has always pushed me to be uh, curious to know a lot about human trafficking. In 2014, the President of the Republic uh, made a speech and he said, we can't afford to keep quiet on the face of human trafficking. How is it possible that our children, particularly girls, have become a commodity, even though we are aware of the problem? People are not commercial goods. Ending trafficking of girls goes beyond law enforcement. It is a responsibility of every citizen. I love this. I loved this uh, speech from His Excellency when he addressed. It was way back in 2014, um, and he said, addressing the issue of human trafficking, it's not. It should go beyond law enforcement authorities and become a responsibility of every citizen. So it's up to you, it's up to me, it's up to everyone to put in efforts and address or advocate for the eradication of human trafficking. How can we do that? It's still a problem. Um, I gave a little bit of the introduction on what human trafficking is and uh, I won't go deep into that. We all know that human trafficking is a lawful act of transporting or coercing people in order to benefit from their work or service, typically in form of forced labor or sexual exploitation. We will, get to we will get to share more forms of human trafficking. Um, it's not always, it's not only sexual uh, trafficking or trafficking uh, wanting for labor or cheap labor. We'll get to know other forms of human trafficking as the day goes on. But at the Legal Aid Forum, maybe to skip and say we've been, um, engaged or we've handled cases of human trafficking that most of them, the common of them are sexual. Um, a colleague of mine here said that there is a rampant rise in sexual exploitation, especially to the girls. These are the vulnerable people in our community. One being unemployment, given the nature of our country, 
uh, education levels, all these factors are contributing to making girls very vulnerable and prone to human trafficking. So, um, I want to share with us the existing legal framework on human trafficking. Some people don't really know that there is even a law, a specific law on human trafficking in Rwanda. This is a great effort that the government has done, putting a specific law uh, that, well, before I run into the law, there is the Constitution of the Republic of Rwanda. In its articles, there are specific articles that share that, um, for instance, Article 14 and Article 13, these articles um, are extremely, they prescribe that uh, a person is in violation inviolability. Um, they say that every person has a right to life and no one should um, exploit another person. So the constitution being the basis of all laws, this shows that human trafficking is uh, a crime that is not acceptable in, the, you know, in our government. So I was saying on the law, uh, this law that relates to, preven to prevention, suppression and punishment of trafficking of persons and exploitation of others. Uh, this law was adopted in 2018. That was the first time that the law, a specific law on human trafficking was adopted in Rwanda. And as we see, this law does not only prevent, but it also punishes crimes that fall into human trafficking. To me, I find that the government has put in efforts to address the issue of human trafficking but its implementation. But again, given the nature of human trafficking and um, the evolution of this era, uh, technology, as as the, as the world is 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 developing and technology is advancing, perpetrators also learn other tactics of committing this crime of human trafficking. Now that there are many social media platforms, Facebook, internet, Twitter. Victims fall prey to traffickers when they didn't know that they are, they are going to be in, the, in this trap. So you find that there are some provisions in the law that are not really addressing the issue of human trafficking. If I get into contact with someone on Facebook and they promise me a job, I'm, um, I'm an employed young guy. They tell me, uh, we'll come to you, Kenya or Uganda, I have a job for you the youth tend to go in thinking that they are doing the right thing. They will go not knowing that all fall in the club of human trafficking. So it's hard that the law will address this issue. When someone has gone freely, there is no coercion, there is no force on the victim. Nigute wa afugango omonu mahuriye kuri internet, alakuki yuza ze nguha kazi, uradiye, hawagushi za hiji tubu, hawagushi za hoku pressure, na acha hachiri mao hagati. So the law ahanga habira goye kujira giteje ko repanishinge ino process ili moku kanisha kwe human trafficking. Nyamara harama teje ko li hari murubanda ni hana chako se li kumida human trafficking. Ari kwa se muri yo process umona jie yi tuwa ye kuneza atara amenya kwa ajie mucha, ajie kuwa mwe mucha hacha hima, ajie kuwa victim wa human trafficking. So, bila kwa ye kujirango to preventing, ino teje kwa preventing human trafficking, ahali ni usangariza kupanishing. Ari kwa prevention, mwuko na mifuzo and the technology, ili mwakute ye bile, ili kwa ye chani. It needs awareness, chani, mwusho kwa, yes, hali teje. Ari kwa se abandu wa nani tiko ni hali. Ese ni babi menya wa mwono jie kuneza na umutu kwa rigitu. What will happen? So these are all gaps that I think um, we need to address today. Uh, in this session or conference that we have today. Again, there is a law on the prevention and punishment of gender-based violence. There is a law... Uh, that prohibits forced labor under our labor law in Rwanda. So why am I sharing all this? I want to show us that there are some efforts, 
not even some efforts, a lot of efforts that the government has put in to bring in a structure, the legal framework. Anything that can um, a human trafficking. So, why is it that this crime is still happening? Yet, Haramatejiko, Hana human trafficking, Haritejiko, Hari Injigomri Lebalo, the Hanako, Bukore Shungana, Uri underage. But again, why is it that Harabu Harachabu Nikawa and Batoya? Many victims before they get into uh, child labor. So it's up to us today that we discuss all measures that we can take, or awareness, or other things that we can do to, to, to really address on this issue. Uh, not only our legal framework uh, is uh, is uh, limited to our domestic laws, no. Rwanda is also party to a lot, many, many various international conventions that uh, bind our country on uh, human trafficking. I want, uh, I just listed some of them. There is a protocol on prevention and punishment of human trafficking. Uh, there is a convention on uh, rights of a child. Uh, there is a convention on worst forms of child labor convention. Then we have a protocol on sale of children. All these international instruments, Rwanda is bound to, to them. That means, human trafficking. legally, we have a good framework that punishes and uh, and prevents human trafficking. So we have to really tackle the issue. Okay, let's leave the legal framework. So where is the problem besides the legal framework? Maybe we shall see its own uh, awareness, or we shall see that. Uh, or any other thing, I don't want to run into conclusion, it's something that we are going to, to come up all together. So, um, I want to share with you Laugh's intervention in the, or before I do that, uh, I, 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 I came up with a, a slide that talks, that talked about most affected communities or targeted people in Rwanda. Um, giving an experience from Laugh, I won't say maybe other institutions will share with us who are the communities or who are the groups of people they 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 they, they find more prone or vulnerable to human tra trafficking. But uh, on our side at LAF, uh, we found that uh, young girls, young girls and refugees. I don't know in the case of men or someone else will give us, but on our side as LAF, We've seen young girls, women, and refugees. These are people that are most prone or vulnerable to human trafficking. Or maybe there are other groups of people that they don't really come to love. I wouldn't say our LGBT community, yes, I know. We've had that and we are conducting research on that to see if these people, the rate at which they are being trafficked or involved in human trafficking, but I won't run into that conclusion. That's why I didn't include it here in my slide. But at LAF, we've seen young girls, women, and refugees. Refugees, why? Uh, we know that we have refugee camps. Like at LAF, we work with uh, Mahama, uh, Tigjeme camp, and Mogonga camp. So in these refugee camps, people come in, um, in these camps, get to have a life have children, young girls, boys, but again, these children need to go out of the camp life, of the refugee camp lives. And they need jobs, they need uh, to have a life besides the camp, the refugee camp life. That's where, that's where they get to be vulnerable and uh, more prone to, to, to traffickers who tell them, oh please, come out of the refugee camp, I'll give you a job. We've seen many cases of refugees who are, who are lied or promised falsely that they're going to give you a job, let your parents stay in the camps, but come out, they're giving you a job. Or a 16 or 12 year old girl or boy goes, when he gets there, they, they, they drag him into other, other forms of things that, I, that, I, that, are made, that are very hard to explain. We've seen girls come and say, um, I'll share a success story in here of some girls that um, were taken into prostitution at the age of 16, 17, and 12. They were refugees. 
they were told, uh, leave your parents there, come in here, we're going to give you school, work at home, and uh, we will cater for your education. But in the wrong run, these girls were taken into prostitution, internally in here, Rwanda. So, uh, these are the most uh, groups of people at the Legal Aid Forum we've got to interact with and found that there is a high risk of um, human trafficking going on in refugee camps. So, having known that at the Legal Aid Forum, we tried to see how can we intervene in addressing this issue, and uh, we have a program that, that addresses human rights, that is called Human Rights Promotion and Protection. Under this program, uh, we do legal representation for, well, we have a legal representation program at the Legal Aid Forum that offers free legal aid, uh, representation, advice, and assistance to everyone that falls in the vulnerable, that they are vulnerable. But when it comes to victims of human trafficking, uh, we, we do it in a very uh, advanced way. We don't only provide legal representation in courts or anything, but we go further. So after, after filing a case for you as a victim, what, what next? The life after. So we offer psychosocial counseling to the victims. But again, I should say there are still very few that come to the legal aid forum. Not because they don't know, but again, uh, victims tend to feel, I don't know if it's a bias or something, they don't feel free to share their life, that everything they went through. So it's, it's hard to, to handle that person, give them counseling. So we've had uh, cases of victims who come and tell us, um, I'm a victim, I need you people to help me in legal representation, but after a month or something, he says, oh please, can you leave this? I'm no longer interested. Oh, please leave this. You call the person. No, 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 we shall, we shall not disclose your names. We shall, no, 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 at the community. I don't want people to, to know that when I was in Uganda, I was doing prostitution. People thought that uh, I have a job there. Because they leave their places saying, I've gotten a job in Dubai. I've gotten a job in Kenya. So they keep, uh, they keep faking their life in here and there. So when they come, they don't really feel free to expose what happened to them. So it's still a challenge that even when we have this program that uh, provides legal representation to the victims of human trafficking, we really don't get the victims to help. Um, still on that, uh, we, have a, we, we have a psychosocial counseling program at the Legal Aid Forum. And this is a call to everyone in here. You know, someone is a victim of uh, trafficking, regardless of when they were a victim, please refer them to us. Because we know there is a part of counseling that these people need. There is a lot they've gone through, and they are like, okay, this is the past, let everything be forgotten. But this is something we feel like it's uh, hard to build this person's life. So uh, at the Legal Aid Forum, we also work with government institutions. We've been working hand in hand with the uh, uh, gender monitoring office that uh, they refer to as cases of uh, victims that need legal representation or advice in regards to their we not only provide legal representation at the legal aid forum we do research and specifically why I'm here I've been involved in research that the legal aid forum has conducted it's we, we do research on uh, what are the key causes of uh, human trafficking? How can we address uh, this issue? Currently, I was happy that I was invited in this um, meeting today. We, we, we're having um, a research that we are conducting regionally with and slavery and human trafficking organization being spearheaded with free the slaves in Kenya. So what we are doing under this research, we, are, we want to come up with a, a policy that engages victims. We've had policies that the government seeds, uh, stakeholder seed, think for the victims without their participation. But in this research, we want to bring victims, what do you really need us to do? So in this research, uh, we are conducting interviews with victims, and many of them, those that love has served, and those that 
those people know but didn't come to laugh. We interview them, share their life uh, experiences when they were in that horrible situation of human trafficking and ask them, okay, there is a legal framework, but again, what should be done from your, from your wishes or desires? So this is a research that is ongoing. I would love to share more about this ongoing research with uh, Smart Talk Cafe in our, in our own time and we see how we can collaborate to find victims, interview them, so that we come up with a policy that engages victims. Um, so basically that's what the Legal Aid Forum does uh, in addressing human trafficking, or maybe more will be shared later, but I want to skip uh, quickly to a success story as I conclude. But oh, before that, I want to share with you challenges that we encounter. Um, when, we, when we are trying to address this issue of, of human trafficking, we encounter many challenges, one being the silence among victims. This is something that uh, the victims are really not free to share with or come up and say, oh yes, I've been a victim, I need to tell you ABCD that this is what happened. Even when they come, as I said, they are free to, to share this today, but tomorrow they don't show up. So you find that you really don't know every step of this person. So the culture of silence, another challenge that we've faced as the legal forum, we've seen uh, limited knowledge about human trafficking among local leaders. It's not only local leaders. Let me just say leaders. I, I was, I was uh, suspicious to put leaders, but I, I was saying if at all they are big leaders in here, policy makers here, they will all, all be biased, but this is the truth. Many people don't really want to share or admit that there is forms of human trafficking ongoing in here. So when, how did we even come to know this? Sometimes there are cases of human trafficking that our policy makers or these institutions uh, mistake or classify into gender-based violence cases. You find a case was of human trafficking, and they say, oh, maybe this is a, they want to classify it as a gender-based violence case, of which we really don't find okay, because these people have different treatment that they, they're supposed to be having. So we've seen that in, in institutions like RIP, maybe a case comes in and they want to classify this as a, a gender-based violence case. So, um, we've seen this as a gap as well, insufficient measures to address the root causes of human trafficking. This is a challenge that we really don't know how it's going to end. We know tra human trafficking is, is present in the country globally. We know root causes, one being unemployment, one being... Uh, but again, how are we addressing the root causes of these problems? We want to prevent it from the perspective on uh, imprisoning perpetrators, Putting in those, but again, we know there are root causes of unemployment. We know uh, there are root causes that, this is a question that I'm posing to everyone here, that even when we're having engagements, let's see the root causes of human trafficking and how can they be addressed. Um, we've seen a challenge of uh, identification challenges, as I said, uh, some service providers tend to classify cases of human trafficking to be other forms of, of maybe gender-based violence cases or penal cases of which we really, we really don't find okay if it's a human trafficking case, let it to be human trafficking case so that even after after court, this person can be given special attention like counseling or any psychosocial support. There are many of them, of course, limited um, resources Again, uh, awareness. I don't know if I put this in, but there is still a lot that should be done to raise awareness on this issue. Um, conclusively, Dorofa, I have a success story that I wanted to share with you of the victims that we helped at the Legal Aid Forum. I wasn't shy to highlight the name of the perpetrator but I didn't disclose the names of the victims. We had three victims that came at the Legal Aid Forum. Um, they were young kids, 16, 17, and 18. Three girls that were trafficked in Uganda by this man called Clever here in Rwanda. 
So this man lived in Uganda and had connection with the parents to these young girls. He promised to the parents, again, given the vulnerability of the life of these people, the family were very poor. The family was very poor. So this man said, okay, I'm a big investor in Uganda. I have jobs there. Let me take your young girls, give them a life, give them education. So the girls went in that the parents had blessed their journey. They said, okay, go, this is your uncle. He's going to give you a job. That's why I said prevention of these crimes, it's very tricky to know that these girls, no one would tell that these girls are going to fall trap of human trafficking because they, they were not taken under any coercion. It was an agreement of this man that had with the parents, give me your girls. So no one would tell that something was suspicious in him. When they got there, the first night, girls were taken into the bar, told them this is what you're going to be doing. Uh, the next day, men come by the young girls into sex. So these girls um, didn't know how to communicate. The parents knew that they are with their uncle in Uganda, working, but the girls were having a rough days. Uh, it was late. They told us they spent like six months to eight working as prostitutes. So from there, we, we, we are grateful that, uh, I don't know how, but they were brought back in, in Rwanda with uh, our government here. So when they came, then they were not free to share their life. They told their parents, we don't have anything to, 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 to bring. We don't want this man to be brought to court. We don't want this thing to be known. We don't want our peers to know that when we left to Uganda, we were prostitutes. Please keep it at the family basis. So the Legal Aid Forum intervened in and talked to the girls first. We were convincing them. We want, we don't want to put this, because they knew that when we take it to court, that means the whole world is going to know. The whole world is going to know about their life. But we had um, sessions. It took us almost a year convincing them with, uh, talking to them, counseling them. So they came up in, uh, this happened in 2016, 2017, 2018, but they agreed that we filed a case on their behalf in 2019. 2019, we filed the case. Uh, this man was brought to justice, and he was uh, punished with an imprisonment of eight years. He's now in, in, uh, in, uh, in prison. But again, we said this is not enough. So what? How are, how are these girls going to get a, a good life after? Um, we continued giving them support uh, under our program of psychosocial support in them and counseling. But as of now, these girls, uh, they are paralegals in their communities. So we have uh, community-based paralegals at the Legal Aid Forum that we work with. Um, yeah, I'm running short of time, but I'm concluding. Uh, we work with community-based paralegals. These girls volunteered to be paralegals that are going to be helping their fellow young girls not to fall trap of human trafficking. So ladies and gentlemen, as I conclude, um, I'm giving an assignment to all of us here to come up with measures or what should we do. So I think we, we, we want to come up with a strategy of raising more of awareness than, say, than just putting um, funds or support that we take them to court, but we want to raise more awareness on this issue, and uh, hopefully we're going to reach on this. So thank you very much for your kind attention, and uh, as the day goes on, we are going to share more and more. Thank you. Imambo <laughs>
iyo amaze kugera hano ukamwitaho akabura ko utandukanye na wa wundi ukamubwira amagambo meza kuko twa twarapfuye mu mutwe yarakuye mu bwiye amagambo meza akabura ko mwitaye ho none waba open kuko bakeneye umuntu abwira ariko ikibazo nta nta kizera bakigira ntabwo nakugira ikizera mu bwiye byanyu ariko ko tubanye ko imitsi ishira kugira gishira ikizera nawo nabashukuruka mu kuzo So I really want to appreciate the organizations that have been working with these amazing souls and thank you so much for coming forth and giving us this information that is going to help many more who are out there that we are not even aware of what they are going through. Thank you so much. So this time we will have more time to really interact with the survivors and uh, the stakeholders who are here at the policy level. I know that you are getting more insights on what should be done. People from the legal framework you are also noting on what should be done in order to really salvage the situation because we need uh, to be in a safe environment. We need to be assured that uh, if I leave home, I'm going to go back home safe and sound, right? Yeah. Yes, Emmanuel needs to say something. 
Yes, thank you. Um, maybe there's something that has not been uh, mentioned by our colleagues, uh, the survivors. Mm -hmm. um, one other factor that causes them not to, to, to speak out or to come out and um, report uh, uh, the, the, um, I mean, this ordeal is that they fear retaliation by the traffickers who are not yet apprehended. Yes. So because they think is, uh, maybe the recruiters might be, when she comes out, they might be mentioned and then they apprehend this person and he is convicted. Yes. So they don't know where they are. They are, they are, they are, they are, they are moving all over and then they feel maybe there's one across the country, one within the country could be around, moving around. And they, I say, if they come out, there are threats that were made that in case you mention my name, uh, I will retaliate, I will go and harm your family, I will kill you, I do this. So all those threats uh, cause the victims not to come out. That's one other uh, issue. Akenshi to Shokuria Vanava Fita Mikura Haji. Ava Tida Niti, Bafita influence, Bafiti, so Bidi Biro Rosetan Eko, Yumono Niva Taji, the Beru Tavera Ko, Yadida Navi, Muriango, Yumono Niki, so Akenshi, when a party of Mount Vata, Tinukango Vasuri, Jalabaya. Another thing is that Nango Nango Vanya, exactly how it happened. I'm currently working with the uh, Women of Insight Ministries. Uh, mothers, slums. I know that I woke up and I knew that I was pregnant. So, uko kuta mnyanya story. No kwa jeans agachi agachi. Uko akenshi tu abudi shijeni tu kula bresa tade. Akenshi abara amalira abaru kuta soba mchirwa abaru kuta shangu vuga. So, not knowing exactly what happened, I think that's a hidden as well. Yeah. And also, what she mentions, um, who kuta kila enough funds. Ba 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 kati. Biara ba aye kati akumvali shinja ni kosa jamje. So, uh, what can we help as women on inside? She's like. Um, help me get funds when the money machine you could do that. Don't they? Don't lose my bunga now. At the time she's focused, bunga now is only to shut down my own. So I can be the only one to do it. So the time they show up is something really big that she can't even explain. So that's what we're, we're dealing with: not knowing the story and uh, really not knowing, not getting to want to expose it because they don't know the process how it went. So the solution there will be step by step. Thank you. Um, in Uganda, Emmanuel, does uh, 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 Topic Java Jingo. Does a book in a call? Those who speak English can follow the, 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 the PowerPoint, and then I speak in Sierra. If you have a novation of work for any, you got a Pumushinga, Nakoraga, I will Jangua, you will migration. Uh, 
ibakoresho bihagije ko yarwanya icunza cyaba ndaza kuvuga ko byagezweho kuva muri 2023 ah Chani chani minijisti Kwa 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 cyangwa itegeko ryo ryo kurwanya icuza cy'abantu ryagezweho ikindi ministeri na bafatanya bikorwa ba leta bageze ku kurundi rwego rwo kuba harabayo iteka rya ministeri ryo kureba ko bafasha abaho bindi kibazo cy'icuza cy'abantu Ichindi ni ministeri hoda, ichindi ministeri changua itajaze ho, haba yeho, ukuru chibo, guhari, mukubwa nia ibya ha, harimu na chuo ni chuo za jawa nu, ichindi chashi michezi na ho kuanda, nukomuri inama changua muri ibuliro. Bahama kaya lukumu sebata tuawele tse. Haba yuko kushira huo ministeri yutoweera. Eshizo komiti. Komiti yuhuru yuhuru yuko na bafite mshinga lukumu anichuza jawa nu. Nzee kuzitano kani. Nina mwanafu haruzi nzee ku ribu ministeri ali yufite mshinga lo yobora. DGIA. Ujenzo wa shida kuna ni muzi, mwenye kato juu kwa na 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 pole pole na tidi, so I'm happy to to meet you. Ichindi SNI bichi ya jesgo, bifuka ku hawa civil society organization ni bichi mwa hau mwa tangiri, haribia kuzwe, ufata nje na reta. Gua tak mungkin tak jadi mulai ayam. Ah, ini jauh lebih bagus. Gua ni cuci saja baru. Hari ni ni enye. Zo hera ho, zo kubua nya ini cuci saja baru. Mungkin zo atur ya kalau kami buat zo, aku mau jauh. Ini nu cium beri, aku mau tiwam beri. Nuku kumi di cia hati tarabu. Cause, es abah cuci zaman ni wan, abah cuci zaman ni wan. Ese naya he maira kuzi ukoresho, chumba roots, wangu ese abantu wakuzi kutoa eburundi, kutoa Tanzania, baadhi boka na baadhi kwa, imamu wacha ni baadhi haria ni hii. So ahonga ho haagwali in depth research, baadhi kusha kushazi, kutoa ejuali kuhutanga makuu, wa fasha ufata njia bikoa na sifa sana tu kwa. Basho bora kwenye response, ujio ba subira, mukubwanya, ujio ba suiza itibazo, tichi cha haki chuzi kwa baba. Chapia ejo hodi hali yeyo, this is practical thing. Ejo hodi hali, kwa chuo kwenye na juri, ujio koko, jaha kuri yangu paka kuri yao victim. Nirango, jicho cha sema immigration, na mina fete, na wakwana ni yopeje kure wako abafiti mbo bahansi, wako reshe embassies, embassies zidhu. Hapa ba shaka mafuranga, kuku kuna njia kuchuzwa, hapa jeri ya tega nizu, wolo wao fata miscellaneous budget, kuna wao fata kumushara wao kuzi kora kure mbasi. So jicho cha sema resources, sivyo sana kwa reshe wao abafiti resources. Mwafasha reta, mudi hawa yuko tibo kwa dufite baadhi 
Oman. Dufite batano Kuwait. Mukaboke. Katowa katowa sabili amatiche indeji. Mukafashare. That is the approach. How Sufo Sadi can come in to support government. Ida udushinga tu chile se. Ura mugaru ye. Ura muhaye ufasha kwa kwa visa na mitima visa na mitima. Fitelo kumu suliza muri komunite muri habiyeme. Ida muri voluntary victim repatriation kwa mugaru wa kwa mugaru ufasha kutoa atazasuli. Kujua kwa mugaru wa kwa mugaru kase nubundi amfasha jibiti. Kumuva uzima wa yego mik wa suli yuko. Oga suli ya kujia kwa re trafficked. Yes. Um. If you are saying that, then you can't just be missing. In Gonga, you may not be able to do it. 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 Thank you. So, the next person that we are going to be having on stage is um you tell me if that is a meal i don't know but from what i have please help me know if it's a meal okay so this person has over 10 years of experience in the ngo management possesses considerable skills and knowledge in document development managing the time managing the tanky projects stakeholder analysis capacity assessment research project management, monitoring and evaluation, capacity needs assessment, trainings, strategic planning and development, among others. His key qualification is, a, is having a PhD in international development. So we are having a graduation coming around there. Eh? And I think uh, if he doesn't have a compound, we can still come back here for the graduation. So he also has a master's of science in international development. His specialities are, as I mentioned before, but these ones are specifically programs development and execution, strategy development, monitoring and trainings, fundraising management. I've seen uh, one of the key gaps is a shortage in resources. So we have somebody who has the capacity to fundraise for projects, to not for them to be short-lived, okay? And then um, he also does project implementation strat uh, strategy uh, facilitation. He's worked with, um, he's currently working, he's the co-founder and head of programs and partners at Delight Rwanda. He has worked with vision uh, for a nation from UK as the national representative. He's also worked with the United Nations Framework Convention of Climate Change. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Emil and Kathy. Katuti mo kachi mo ba mbaku jira ngo kwe jisho mo jwa mifuka. Let's go na yo. Pa ifzo cha ne. Mo imne mo vision, mo mission. Mo kuto shaka pa nlo ngi the capabilities. Zawa nwa lipule nwa lepo, mwini community, hanyima vision nuko tushaka kuinspire inga a bright and a resilient generation. Nato tushaka kujira a generation in resilient yalawa a traffic. Chia angwa umuna techeleza. Kujira, ichi wakura aliko handa wanda umtecheleza kumugulishu. Project 2050, yitu waga sustains the community, the full rights of an increased knowledge on human trafficking forms and faces in Rwanda. We have to talk about this. We have to talk about Rwanda. 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 Bila kujira mwa ya muhereze, afuwe mwa ya makuru nya muha ya kamura. Kupela yu kwa keshi, ama teje kumensha na hali, aliko akeshi na kutuyazi. Nanu ya jia kukonzi, kukutiye mawawe. 
ndaye mpamvu hari ya mugenzi wacu yise kuvuga ngo umuntu wagiriwe nabi na mwene wawo nta mvuga kuba nayo ko nta mvuga ni nyirase nta mvuga ni se wawo arahita cha hehe mu manze mu nyiko bigatuma abyihorera twagiye tubikora rose tenete kubikira muri gasabo iyo mibare ni kwigaragara ndetse kugeza kuri rurindo ari ya nyuma itanga toto yibihumbi ya miliyoni ya miliyoni ya kimwe hanyuma icyanyuma turimo gukora dukora ya design zego no ku developing app cyangwa se application ishobora gushirwa cyo kugira ngo tugire muri telefone hanyuma mu tuhe ikibazo ukabashobora gutanga amakuru hanyuma inzego zikagufasha murakoze Mr. I work for the government and empowering of social economic rights and gender and the vulnerable people in Rwanda. Hano, I just want to modernist library. Wana sanze, kwa na chitana none human trafficking. Modernist library, ni uchakari ko, uri modern, ujez beho, uvuvuguru, yes, izu ko na abdit. Munu, na gari ngachira, waza kawa kawa ziri kawa kawa jana, alimu aporoshio kuwe gerano kuwa shuka, no kuwa manipira mungutu kwa ino nongo nagafata disijia wa akijano. Ya jera yo, akakoreshwa slavery, aliko jijanye, hahawa yo, wengi kinesie kujitike, ataruko wa yashizuka mungu, kwa zi mungu kwa tukwa kutu yuzi. So, Mr. Morris and Dati, please welcome to the podium. Right after, we're going to be having a panel discussion, and this panel discussion is going to be, I'm talking as you're supposed to be coming, no clubs this time. <laughs> so, right after he's done with this presentation, we're going to go into a panel discussion. We're going to be having different stakeholders giving us depth, uh, into, uh, giving us depth details into what they're doing, and even I will invite you, the audience, so that we wrap this out. By the time we are leaving, then the government of Rwanda is going to be a stronger. We'll be having more toolkits, right? Voila. Hi. Hi, hello. Uh, thank you so much for those who are sharing, for those who are giving whatever they're doing. Uh, for me, uh, at first I think I was talking to Emil and uh, Mr. Cabrera. I was saying that uh, when we came first, I think it was uh, three months ago, uh, and I was really trying to look for organizations that are dealing in human trafficking. I tried going to the internet, did every single thing I could not. So the fear that we had was there is no organization or civil society that is on ground to making sure that uh, number one, there is awareness, and uh, number two, uh, those who have been affected uh, are getting help in any way whatsoever. Uh, so uh, I am going to share my slide slowly, uh, which uh, is going to align with the specific areas that uh, I have had and uh, how they are going to relate with whatever we are uh, planning to do. Uh, the first thing is, uh, someone said if he hears cafe, he, he sees tea. Uh, I think I've explained to one or two people. Uh, Smarto Cafe started uh, with young people just coming, sitting down, and having coffee, and discussing what are the issues that are affecting them. So through that, that's how we started building the community under Smarto Cafe. So we used to meet every single week on Fridays. Get coffee, let's discuss what are the issues. Next week, the issues that can be solved immediately, we go and try to get solutions. Then, 2018 until 2019, it reached a point where we had a very huge community 
where now we decided now to develop it into uh, an organization, uh, but not kill out the name that started uh, every single activity. So that's why we always have this discussion. Until we have the solutions here, that's where now we are going to go to the community. So just don't go and give solutions to the community that have not been discussed, have not been chopped, uh, someone has not asked questions, someone has not said if it is relevant or not. So that now, when the community members are here, they will be like, yeah, this is what can help us, this is what can't uh, really help us. And uh, I really want to really thank that uh, I have uh, these uh, individuals here. Uh, the main reason why we are engaging specifically under human trafficking uh, is uh, uh, here in Rwanda is based on a report that we got from TIP 2021, a refugee. Uh, specifically covering East Africa, and as much as different organizations, governments are trying to develop policies, uh, government organizations are really trying to go on ground to make sure that uh, uh, they're helping people understand what is human trafficking, still the number uh, when it comes to sex trafficking is still increasing here in uh, East Africa, doing a little bit of a gap. Uh, I know so many people knew since uh, when COVID started uh, until last year, there was a really huge increase, specifically for young people coming from East Africa going to Arab Arab countries, which pushed countries to start now looking into what are the labor, what are the international labor laws that are going to govern uh, how these people are going, uh, how are they going to benefit, and how are they protected, specifically with the government, so that when Maurice and that has come to Rwanda to work under Smart Talk Cafe, the government knows I came here. Because I have a legal passport, I am working on my work permit, I have done all the clearance, I was with the bill, I think it was yesterday, I was moving around in Rwanda, them taking, and at other rim, taking my fingerprints so that when an issue happens, then it is easier for government to know, ah, we have someone who is in Kenya, how now can we help him? And uh, one of the key areas that brought us to start engaging under human trafficking here in Rwanda was uh, when we were doing a research last year, uh, there is a place, uh, Kibera, Madare, uh, Umoja, uh, that are in Kenya, Nairobi. And the people that we were working with, specifically under human trafficking, we came to realize there, were, there was a really high number of Rwandese and Congolese who were there. Then they were under these agents, uh, this organization that are agents, where they are being given as maids. Uh, boys, uh, specifically boys who are coming from Rwanda, those who are coming from Tanzania, they were being taken to Narok where they're going to uh, uh, hard cattles, the way Emmanuel was saying, hard cattles, uh, then uh, work in industrial area. In Kenya, there's a place called industrial area where they can go in industrial area. And most of the Congolese that we were also getting, specifically, uh, we came to realize some of them were refugees. But now, because of the way he moved and got himself into Kenya, he doesn't, he can't go to UNHCR because UNHCR, when they go and they key in information, they will say uh, you're not supposed to be in this camp or you're not supposed to be in this country. So fearing aspects of deportation and all that. Number two, for those who have also come to Kenya uh, illegally, specifically, not only just human trafficking, but also smuggling, human smuggling. So human smuggling, where I know. Uh, my uncle, uh, Emil is my uncle now, uh, has called me to, uh, to Rwanda and told me, hey, you come, I will get you a job. So definitely I'll come on my own will. I'll use my ID or my passport and every single thing. And when I reach, then it becomes a big problem because when I come to Emil as my uncle, my uncle tells me, uh, you see here in Kenya, you're a Rwandese. For you to work, you need to be under this specific agency. So you see the agency has gotten you and they're going to put you under labor trafficking or under sex trafficking, but it didn't come to you directly. It went to him, him called you, then come. So you find when governments, when someone goes to report, when the government tries to look, they're like, ah, but this person, he was asked these specific questions, he had a letter, he or she had a letter and all that. So these are the things that we identified and so, Instead of us just building solutions in Kenya, why don't we come on ground and realize what is the problem? Is it that people really do not know? Is it that people really do not understand? Because you'll read, you'll meet a Rwandese, you ask them, do you have a passport? 
No. But I am in East Africa. In East Africa, I don't have to have a passport. I can just move uh, with my ID. But now you see, if you do that, a trafficker knows. And you're like, ah, I don't have an ID. So what will I do? I'll develop a passport. But instead of putting Morris and Dati, they're going to put Moses Wetangula. So when I travel abroad or I go to Oman, when uh, one of the issues that we are realizing is when government goes and is trying to track you, trying to get you, it can't because for them they're like, no, this person is in Kenya. How did they reach to, uh, to the other countries? Now the other thing is with the people that you also engaged specifically in those countries, they also don't want uh, to be known, especially in countries like Oman, because if they get you, they deport you immediately, especially in government. And number two, uh, we'll let's say, I think something that we'll let's discuss with Mercy. Either way, if you're not making shillings at home, you look for each and every way to make sure that you can make money. And this brings out an aspect of desperation, uh, being an issue where they are ready to be sold from one owner to another, so that now they can keep, they can stay and also send money, uh, send money back home. So these are the issues that uh, we looked into, and uh, we were uh, really engaging and uh, making sure that we understand what is the issue and all that. Uh, another thing that really brought us into uh, why we also really want to engage with you people, and I think it has been mentioned with a few of you, is number one issues to do with technology. Technology is creating high. If you look at the Federation report under human trafficking 2021, you will realize now Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok are the highest. These days, human trafficking is not being done by kidnapping. Human trafficking is not being done by sending letters so that you can come. People are now using Facebook, people are using Instagram, people are using TikTok. Why? The highest population of people who are in Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok are young people who are ready to go and explore. They will not, if they get an opportunity to go to Kenya and work, and someone is telling them, you're going to be uh, maybe getting $500, you're going to be getting $1,000 per month. For him, he will be like, uh, if I stay at home, there is nothing. I'll just be waking up in the morning and going to help other people. But this person says, he's going to give me passport, he's going to give me money to come, and he's going to do every single thing. And how do they use? They use now Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Uh, now accounting to more than 60% of the human trafficking engagements in the whole world and also in East Africa. And I think because even Mr. Emil has already, during in his organization, they have already realized there's a very big issue, especially when it comes to issues to do with the internet. So the question is government. There is Facebook, there is Instagram, there is TikTok. These are companies. These are companies where, uh, if you guys can't remember, there was a regulation that came out in Kenya, what is regulating whatever engagements are, done, are being done in, uh, on Facebook. But now the biggest issue is the Ministry of ICT, and the Ministry of uh, Internal Affairs and Labor, they cannot understand one another. Because this one is benefiting this way, and they don't want that benefit to go, and this one is trying to develop a regulation. So under technology, what do we do? Because whether we like it or not, it is the new trend, and it is here, and it is coming so fast. We are engaging young people. What will you engage a young person? So that at the end of the day, number one, he has a change of mind, where him at community, can make money with whatever resources there. Number two, how are we making sure that we regulate? It is to do with Facebook. How does the government regulate such kind of areas where now there is easier aspect of screening? How do we screen? How do we make sure that this information is clean? If a Rwandese is coming from here and going and they've been, uh, they been uh, given an opportunity on Facebook and they come and tell you as a friend, it is for you to tell them who you said. Number one, before you go, please make sure go to migration or go to, although the process is going to be long, but you will have a passport, you will have a visa, you will have a, the government when they go and print, they will know you have gone. So, another thing that we are also looking at was social economic uh, reasons, which is one of also the key uh, areas. Number one, unemployment. We are having a huge budget. Uh, I always tell people, government will never, will, will never give work to everyone. The, the way the population is increasing is not the same way the government is also making work, making jobs. The only thing it can do is create an environment where 
people are able to engage in small businesses and small enterprises. But now how will people engage in small enterprises when the only information they're getting is A, B, C, D and getting grants and getting all of this. So whatever we're doing is as social enterprises, as government, are you creating an environment where uh, a male and hope washroom are able to work hand in hand with other organizations so that now they can also train these people in schools so that now they can use number one art. Uh, they can develop art, they can develop everything. Then government, whatever it does, it subsidizes the rate of what these people are going to sell. Crush of the market increasing uh, the intake in terms of the market and all that. So how are we making sure that we are reducing aspects of unemployment, not depending on government, but making sure that the skills have been developed at community level, this is through training. Uh, how do we uh, reduce aspects of poverty and hunger? Because poverty and hunger go in hand in hand. How are we increasing the agricultural space? How are we making sure that young people are engaging in these spaces and they know if I am in Kigali and I'm producing cashew nuts, I know Rwanda Investigation Board are going to buy 10 sacks. I will do, because I know I'm, I'm guaranteed is going to go. So, and one of the engagement that we always we did in Kenya is we are training people on creation of furniture and uh, products from bamboo. And whatever we do is we tell the uh, community leadership uh, from every ten furnitures that these people make, five has to go to the county government. You have to, even if you're going to put it on the straw, please you have to take. Because next day when someone is new is going to come, you'll need new chairs. So you see, these people are already seeing what are the things that are there in the community and how are they going to make sure they, they work on. Number two is porous borders. I think we have, uh, Mr. Emmanuel has discussed on specific issues to do with porous borders, where people are able to move around. I know East Africa is one of the East Africa is one of the regions that are trying to uh, have the free legal and free trade areas, just like West Africa. And with the, the benefits that come specifically that come with the uh, the free uh, trade areas, but now there are also issues that come with it. Because for me, if I have a company in Kenya, I know the regulations in Rwanda are very tough. But now, the free trade area has given an opportunity where Rwandans can come to Kenya without a passport and also an ID, then I'll take advantage of that. So how do we make sure as much as we are trying to create a solution, especially at the uh, porous borders, and that are maybe our throat of government, how do we make sure that we screen? We make sure this person is in this place. It's difficult, I know, but how do we start? How do we make the first steps? So that now people can also be 100% sure if I go through the legal means, as much as it is going to be tedious or expensive, I am covered in, uh, in, one, way, in one way or another. Then there is poor international cooperation and the lack of awareness on both law enforcers. So making sure if we are looking at the border areas. So we are running a project with uh, a lady from Uganda. And whatever we are doing is, and we want also it to come here in Rwanda. And whatever we are looking into is to make sure that we develop a, a East African policy that has all the East African countries. That number one, can look at the cooperation of the different governments. So that now they know if people are moving or East Africans are moving or they're moving away, how do we cover, uh, how do we cover each other based on the different labor laws that we have. Then number two, training of the public offices. Sometimes it is there, but bring them, put them here, do a training, a one day training. What is human trafficking? What are the new modes of human trafficking? The policies that we have, do they relate uh, the new trend when it comes to human trafficking because you can have a very strong uh, policy. I'll give an example Uganda. Very, one of the strongest uh, policies and law when it comes to international labor and everything. But right now, it's one of the countries with the highest number of people who are being trafficked. And also refugees are being trafficked through Uganda because they go to Moshi camp. After they have been in Uganda, after Moshi camp, they're able to slip into uh, Kenya, and when they get you to Kenya, because they can't go to the government, because they know in Kenya, if I get you, you're an illegal, uh, we don't care first about you are trafficked, they deport you first. 
So they have already deported you, then you go and talk to the embassy, then the embassy is going to bring out an issue here, then now it becomes, uh, then now they start doing investigation. And that uh, those are also gaps that uh, we have identified. Then uh, lastly, vulnerable communities, so hotspot areas, whatever you're looking into, uh, Daylight has hotspot areas. Hopiwashu has hotspot areas. Legal, uh, uh, legal Aid Forum, they have already identified other hotspot areas. So how are we making sure these other trainings and all that are being done in these hotspot areas so that we do not keep doing the same trainings on the same, same, same community over and over, thinking there is a solution that is being built and there is nothing that is going to work because there is a new area of uh, hotspot areas and this is through research and also creation of co collaboration through civil societies and government and other specific areas. I can see someone is looking more with red eyes. Um, I see and this is what you can still my word. <laughs> um, uh, another thing that you also identified and let's not run away from it, let's just accept is corruption. One of the biggest issues corruption, especially at the border points. Uganda, uh, Uganda border points. You go, pay me, uh, you, you'll pass, no problem. When Rwanda is looking at the database, they're looking for Morris and Dati. Morris and Dati is in Uganda. He's not in Oman. But you, you're already in Oman, and you did not go through Uganda, you went through uh, Kenya. Why? When you reach at the border, the people who are the agents who are selling you that are able to pay uh, the people at the border point, you are able to pass, you are able to get your passport, you are able to do this, so they cannot do due diligence. People that you trust. Your father will not, your pastor won't do anything to you. But now, this is an area where, and it was big, especially now, these agents now come from churches because now in church, they have congregations, they have a lot of people, they have a lot of power at community level. So the father or the pastor, they become a member of the uh, the member of the perpetrators and uh, of the agents, then whatever they do is they put, they put which is very easy when even policemen, they put uh, advertisements on church. Oh, if you want to travel to, uh, to Kenya for work, please reach out to this or write an email to this and all that. Then it goes. Then there is older, uh, older prostitutes, specifically when it comes to the border between Uganda and Kenya. These are the key people who are bringing in uh, people. And one of the areas is Bukoma, Busia, then we go to um, uh, Umoja, that is in Nairobi. And most as I told you, Rwandese, Congolese, are so many uh, that are there. Then businessmen and women. So businessmen are the ones who are running these agents. They are the ones who are employing these people. And the ones who are making sure that things are going to work. So whom are we targeting? We are targeting community, which has put hotspot areas and community leadership. For every organization that is here or any community agent who is here, we are targeting communities or support areas where we can work hand in hand with government, social, uh, uh, civil societies, so that number one, we can do training awareness so that these people can know what is going to be done. Uh, number two, government institutions, so different institutions, uh, and this is specifically on issues to do with policy. So let's look at international policies, what is changing and what are the target areas that you want to work at. The organizations are the key organizations that we are working with here. Yeah. Um, so another thing that uh, we are looking at the way forward is number one, in this country, do you know, or if you are in government, do you know the Trafficking in post South Africa uh, program? Do you know it? It is with UDOC, it is with UNHCR, it is with IAM and these big organizations that are dealing specifically on uh, migration, have they been incorporated specifically under policy level? So that now it can help in terms of uh, making sure that people are working out. These different protocols that were shared on in terms of East Africa, have they been developed in the country? Number two, have they been uh, into the policy? Number two, do the community members know? Do the community leadership know these specific, uh, these specific things? Then, I think internationally, each and everyone has shared whatever needs to be done. And uh, from whatever you guys have uh, prepared is uh, investigation, number one, and prosecution. Uh, number two, uh, protection services for the victims, and also eyewitnesses, because we always forget eyewitnesses. Also eyewitnesses who saw the problem, how do you protect them? Then uh, national referral mechanisms, what are the mechanisms that government has? Do copy what you know? Does delight know? Does legal aid forum know? Because if they don't know, then the community really doesn't know. 
then at community level, does the people know? Does the police at RIU or at the community level do they know? How do we make sure? So this is through training and making them up. Then advocacy. Now what are we going to do next after this? Identify those specific areas, then let's go to trainings. Let's go get to the specific awareness. Let's make people at the community know and understand human trafficking. Then lastly, whatever we're going to do uh, and what the aim and the goal of this specific project is, Rwanda to have one of the clearest roadmaps when it comes to human trafficking, identification, prosecution. How do we make sure that people have, uh, have gotten the, the solutions? Not by sharing them on social media, but it is really clear that if this person gets themselves into problems, they are able and open to reach out to you because you will connect them to the health center. The health center is going to connect them to government. Government is going to connect them with love. Love is going to represent them. Uh, when you're not representing them, they're going to offer uh, free, so, you know, free cycle social services through Hopi Washroom. But all this has been covered in a way that uh, this person is also confident that when I'm reaching out to these specific people, I'm going to get help. Thank you so much. I think I've said so much. You are very Thank you. Thank you so much for taking more than you were supposed to, but we needed it. Right? To Rafa Numba Rafa Mzeko, to Rafa Kucho Yakoze from the beginning. Hadi Kuriko Bonizing a quality was Chirahadi Aravanya Gwanda, Changwa, our news around Murgwanda, Kibitrosko, which is very sad. Mbeleo kutimenya hafo zbichi. Hashi zgeho itejeko ihana chocha. Ijo teje kari kodyo mvalita nyuzgwe. Nungi teje kuri yaje hodyo mvagahari chindi 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 kwa detailed mugufasha awan watruzgo. Yuma angu jate jete kwa jaho iteka rya ministri noneho rivuga muri mu buryo burambuye uburyo abantu bacuruzwa cyangwa bashora kujyana mu byoko rwe byo kucuruzwa bafashwa Speaking with you guys I'm happy to have this discussion and I think it's not going to end here it's just beginning we are going to work together and we are going to work together. thank you Today I'm, uh, I'm seated on a hot seat. My Kinyarwanda is on test today. I hope I pass this exam. So I, I understand that uh, you've said that this, this is a really new subject in the, in the space, but we are looking into having all the measures that we can curb the situation. I got it right. Thank you. Mr. Julian, at the capacity of the director in the anti-trafficking unit at the RIP, what are your key roles and how efficient have they worked? She has talked about working with civil societies. How has it been, given that she has mentioned that uh, the government is really looking into clearing this up? Because it's, it's not a good thing. We want our citizens to be safe. So how is it from your end? Murakoze cyane eh iba numvise ikibazo neza eh ese mu rwego rw'igihugu rushinzwe ubugenza cya eh uruhare rw'ibanze rwacu eh muri iki kibazo cy'icuruzwa cy'abantu usibye ko twebwe turahenga tukongeraho icuruzwa cy'abantu no gushatira ibintu mu Rwanda ntabwo ari icuruzwa cy'abantu gusa hazaho no gushakira inyungu mu bandi eh hanyuma rero uruhare rwa ripo ripo no rwego ruri ugiye kubireba no rwego ruri mu nzego zitanga ubutabera niho bitangirira ariko reka tujyakure turujyane no mu rwego muri rumwe mu nzego zifatanye n'inzego z'umutekano umutekano 
w'abanyarwanda cyangwa baturarwanda kuko ni tuvuga abanyarwanda abantu nako bari bagere ngo ubutabera butangwa ku banyarwanda bonye nabantu be bandi bagenda mu Rwanda iyo wahungabanye hakazamo icyuruka cy'abantu ubwo ikibaji ki kigomba gukorwa no buryo bwo kugerageza kugarura umutekano wahungabanye rumva kuje utangira dosiye hari dosiye zitangirirwa hanze y'igihugu ziyo zitangirirwa hanze y'igihugu bisaba bwa bufatanye twavugaka ufatanya n'izindi nzego cyangwa ibihugu kugira ngo wa muntu uri hariya ba muzane uduhika bitwara neza cyane eh kira ngo rwanda ni rwo rwanda ri mu mu guhangana n'icuruzwa cy'abantu muri iyi rijyo I think he's really given out very key important points. It's just that I can't retrieve them, yeah. but I believe that you have them. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing that. Now we turn into the education space. Our friends delight. One of the key places that they look into working with and creating awareness is in the schools. And they have given statistics of how many schools they have captured, how many teachers they have also uh, worked with. We've also had um, somebody say that, uh, the, like the case she gave, the people who were the victims were supposed to be in school at that, during that age gap. So as an educationist, as somebody who is a practitioner, who is dealing day-to-day -day activities with students, what do you think these people can do, and these people can do, to really curb this mess that we are having? Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Trashima. Nuko kutwegera idufasha no kumenya yuko hari ikintu kitwa icuruzwa ry'abantu none iryo curuzwa ry'abantu dikabirehe no mubana batoya none abo bana batoya ugasanga benshi bavukishwe amahirwe yo kwiga baba bukirwa amahirwe yo kwiga bajya kira abana batoya bamara kubimenya tugakenera yuko bazagaruka kujya mu tubi tubigishe tububake tubasane imitima ariko bonye basubire mu mashuri bibi birumvikana yuko akenshi babana babaje babana ahunga bajye mu tima mu tekereze yabo no kwiga ntiba byose uko babagifite ya hongo bagishi bagi bahura na byo ibyo nayi kumwe na kindi gikobwe cyo delete ya dufashije cyangwa se twakoranyire mu buryo babana bageze bya hunga bana babana bakikije amashuri batwaje kongera kwakira amashuri kaboroheza rimwe na rimwe kuko tukagira nibigo byacu no buryo twigisha tukareba nabari mu kwagwe aho bana bwo bikaho cyane abana bahuye nibazo bikomeye abana barababaye ibyo no hino Chetu wasawa lukumu wako na folo. Akiye shizmi uwa wajo mashuri. Uwa sangana nungo wiyo. Chane. Ayuni ya mge mayeri. Akore shukwa mge churu kwa chawa. Ama ira koma kome. Kufuga ngo. Aba anu. Baha kuruchira tu ava murubanda. Aka jenda kaha kuruchira mwini mwini yunganda. Baka ma pasporo yu waka yini. Mkwini yunganda. Amen. Eh, paspor ingan, akajenda akajamuro man, akajenda kakorira yo ari umugande. No neho, ubugo iyo habayi chiba zoriero, ubugo mbako investigation hari jihe, ni bidu biba homo investigation ni chani. Oibu bjoni kuri vikti mufuza ho, hari na wa suspecti, nukufuka ngo akora icha ha, Yamaze 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 guhindura identity ye agahindura mazina uko yarasanzwe yitwa agashyira abandi 
Rero mu bintu bya investigation nako turi pitinga hanga hariko na urabyumva ikigomba gukorwa. Ukuvuga ngo investigation habaho ibyo mu ijambo rimwe ibyo bita gutressing. Pressing as in the neighbor. I'm liking the discussion. <laughs> That's why we are here. Uh, more from what you have visited, you can give me a minimum and it is being tested. Nicole is a Kujirango, a Vadik Shirango, because of a many gaps, which in Gonine Ichi Igamisha Kuganuko victim, Haraho, which are asking what chance which you could be charged with your cycle and to the Kuteganya Kusajiro Muhir Kaganero, Jim Pitset Kareva, say it takes so far, Java tested, Bingana Kute, a Savari Shirama, you could go very good and easy and go and eh? Are you called Jihari no victim to Ramuri in Jera, Abutumahana? Abantu <laughs> Monaghi, who could be a jail, Thank you. Sense of why we need more forums. And I believe all stakeholders that are here, you've noted that. So we need more spaces for people to talk and express their grievances as we are also looking into finding solutions. Half of the Smart Talk Cafe, something that I didn't mention, I also work for Smart Talk Cafe, I'm their communications person. So on behalf of Smart Talk Cafe and on behalf of Global Initiative, who were not able to make it today to here, they had other engagements in Nairobi, they were supposed to be here. But in our forthcoming engagements, they promised that they should be in our meetings because we need them. Because one of the key um, setbacks that he pointed out is projects not having enough resources in terms of funding. So we need to pull all the funders in a particular space where they see the need as to why we should be having this projects running not for short-lived uh, periods but for prolonged periods so that we can have um, meaningful results. So thank you so much for being patient with us. I really apologize for taking more time than what was stipulated in the program but it was for good, right? For everyone who has contributed, I want you to feel very much honored and I want you to feel that you are appreciated. So before we go out for lunch, because I know it's human nature, when we eat, we tend to relax. So I want you just to pretend that you are very happy. If uh, your lips have some something, you can talk to your neighbor and they give you something for you to put. I want us to have a group photo. Okay, and just to have a group photo, we are going with the help of our. Photo. You know, uh, you can see that everyone wanted to be here, but um, it was a great honor to address to say something as we're closing uh, this session, which I believe that everyone who was here picked something, and uh, it is got a task to do. This is a journey, and we are not going to leave anyone. We are going to go together. Government want, and they also put it in the writing, the law, want to work hand in hand with partners, with civil society. We know uh, one of uh, my friend mentioned it here that uh, at least I went to someone and they heard me and they promised me what they can do. Thank you, Hope you Watch, for the work you're doing. You. I want also to thank everyone here, the Light, uh, Smart Talk Cafe, everyone here. For sure, we are doing a great job. Let's keep it up. 
those people they are developing a more and other sophisticated thing to you know to make our young generation accommodate, uh, accommodate. let's fight them and I know we can do it. Thank you to Mere Ava Nava Shijabi Honora Chinochin. Nara Kuzichan. Now go Jari Jorushin. Now go to Shora Kumbo, would you marry by Yemoni when we come in? I come in white. Nara Kuzichan, a good in white. They cut to commit to Fatani Hatazaji Romo. When you are Murib Jovian Nakaskat Twese Nakaskatorose, I call Nakaska Shok. Savashimirero, Lizzie Co. Muri Mujiza Kurichi out with to Zawa to the Kongi, Ditsenawa and Mazawa to train in the Pujambo to Pujambo to Vijiri Hamuni, the Kutuzawa Shakun Vika, Rakosichan. Thank you so much.